Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Lecturer, Dr. Iwayan Mulyawan, SSM Home, and to all the beloved viewers, I hope you are doing amazing today. In a special occasion, we are from Group 4 from English Department of Diana University Drama Analysis class. We would like to present a topic, Textual Aspect in Drama. But before that, let me introduce the members of the team. So, the members of our group, uh, the first one, Niputu Dia Angga Melani, student number two, Niputu Liana Widya Santi, student number seven, Ana Agung Anitya Dewi, student number ten, Nikade Ayu Kristia Dewi, student number fifteen, and lastly, Nilo Sidharma Widya Ningsih, student number twenty-seven. Next. Okay, before we start, uh, let me explain briefly about the mind map of today's topic. We would like to talk about drama, uh, but generally drama can be divided into two types. The first one is uh, textual drama and then theater or performance drama. Today, we will specifically discuss about the textual aspect and uh, textual aspect and there are several several aspects or points in the textual aspect of drama. The first one is the information flow, the overall structure, space, time, characters, types of utterance, types of stage, and dramatic subgenres. Next. Okay, so let me start by explaining uh, about the dramatic text. So, dramatic text is a form of drama that is enjoyed or presented in the written form. The drama can also be transformed into different types of presentation, which, are, which is theater. Dramatic texts are generally meant to be transformed into another mode of presentation or medium. It can be uh, a theater. In a dramatic text, it has two uh, elements. The first one is the primary text. It is the main body of the play spoken by the characters. And the second one is the secondary text. It is all the text that accompany the main text to give more illustration detail. Next. Okay, now let me, uh, let me explain about the difference between text and theater. So, text play, uh, for the text play readers, they tend to make more cognitive effort to imagine all scenes, including how the characters look like, how they act and react, how they speak along with the setting of all of the scenes. So, for the text play readers, you, we must uh, put more effort to understand the storyline. And for the readers of the text play, uh, sometimes they help by the secondary text to portray the story, but it is not always well written. So it and it is not always mandatory to have the secondary text in a text play. For theater, it is more likely to be the interpretation of the director, actors, costume makers, makeup artists, and all of the production staff who bring the play to the life. So. Uh, it is the perspective from the director and then put in uh, actors. And it involves much more elements to give a soul to the story. The performance includes music, sound effects, lighting, and stage properties. So for the viewers or the audience of the theater, we just need to watch because the, uh, the story is already well performed. Next. So the main features of analyzing a drama. So in... So in drama or textual drama, there are information flow of the structure, space, time, characters, types of utterance, types of states, and dramatic subgenres. The first thing we would like to discuss is about the information flow. Okay, about information flow. So information flow from a drama, it is it deals with the existence of the narrator and how storyline delivered by the performance. It is different from epic theater. Drama usually does not have a narrator. Therefore, 
the audience has to gain information directly from what can be seen and heard on stage. Information can be conveyed both linguistically from the character's speech and non-linguistically from properties, costumes, set, etc. So for drama, uh, it is totally uh, information gained from the performance on stage and there's no narrator to interpret or help the storyline. That's all from my from my part, the next point will be presented by my friend Ayu Christia. Time is yours. Okay, uh, now we move to the structure of uh, textual aspect in drama. Uh, the first one is a uh, story at work. Story is addressed and uh, assumes chronological sequence of events and the plot. It refers to the way events are casually and uh, logically connected. Plots can have uh, various plot lines, different elaboration of parts of the story, which are com combined uh, to form the entire plot. And there are uh, three unities. In structure, uh, textual aspect of drama, the classical unit unities or three unities in drama are the first, the first one is the unity of action. It means a play should have one main action that it flows with no or few subplots. And the second, there is uh, the unity of place. It means a place should cover a single physical space and should not attempt to compress geography, nor should the stage represent more than one place. And the last is the unity of time, it means action in a place should take place uh, over no more uh, than 24 hours. Next, we move to free text pyramid. Uh, a model frequent used to describe the overall key. key stage of a story, offering a conceptual framework uh, for writing a story from start to finish. Uh, this stage are the first one introduction, and then second complicated action, the third climax, and fourth is following action, and the last is status score, which is mean the resolution. We move to space in textual aspects. Space is an important element in drama since the stage itself also represents a space where action is presented. The analysis uh, of place uh, and setting in, play, it, in place can help one get a better feel for characters and their behavior, but also for the overall atmosphere. There are two uh, space indexual aspects it is about uh, illusion of realisms. It means the scenes presented uh, on the stage is meant to be as true uh, to life as possible, and the audience is expected to succumb to that illusion. And then there are naturalists, which was premised on the idea that a person, character, and behavior are largely uh, determined by his or her social aspect. We move to symbolic aspects in space. Another important factor to consider in symbolic space is the interrelatedness of setting and plot. The setting can thus support the expression of the word view current at a certain time, time or generally philosophical, ethical, or moral question. One can say that rather than only functioning as a background or creating a certain atmosphere, the space becomes symbolic space as they point towards other levels of meaning in the text. The next presentation will be presented by Tia to Tia Tanshuts. All right, thank you so much for your time. This next slide. Um, uh, let me continue the presentation by explaining about the time. 
Time is a word that describes the fictional time or setting in a dramatic performance or the timing of one moment to the next in the drama. Uh, the explanation about time time can be uh, will be divided into three uh, subtopics. The first one is succession and simultaneity. The second is the presentation of temporal frames. The last one is uh, story time and discourse time. Next slide, please. Let's talk about the succession and simultaneity. Event and actions can occur in one of two ways, which are successively or simultaneously. Successively means uh, the action occur one after another, and uh, simultaneously means uh, the action occur all at once. And let's move to the presentation of temporal frames. Uh, in the character's conversation can be consists of a short dialogue that contains a word painting, helps actors that describe the scenery vividly, and thus create a, a, a create or paint a picture in the few, uh, in the viewer's mind. Next slide, please. Now uh, let's discuss about the story time and discourse time. This topic also can be uh, divided into three subtopics. The first one is duration, the second order, and the last one is frequency. Uh, let's discuss about the uh, duration first. Duration can be uh, they can be divided into two types. The first one is play time, uh, which is the exact duration in which an action occurs. For example, is the play time or the time of the story in uh, Osborne's look back in anger encompasses several months. But in playing time, which is the duration uh, of an action is performed on the stage uh, in the uh, movie Osborne's look, look back in anger, uh, the playing time is approximately two hours. And the next is the order. Order refers to how events are sequenced temporally and how they correlate to the temporal order or, or of events and action in the plot. Order uh, can be divided into two as well. The first one is flashback, which uh, means events from the past are mingle, mingled with the presentation of current events. And second is flash verge, which, mean, which means the future events are anticipated. And the last one is frequency. Frequency can be divided into three as well. The first one is singulative. When scenes in a play have single actions, they are only shown once. This mode is most common in linear plots where the primary goal is to depict uh, the progression of conflict. This is the mode that most traditional plays use. Second is repetitive. When characters refers to the same uh, or similar events that have already occurred. And the last one is iterative which means an event takes place several times, but is, re uh, but is referred uh, to in the next, uh, the next text only once. Uh, next slide, please. Then we move to the characters. The characters, the explanation about characters will be divided into several subtopics. Uh, the first one is major and uh, minor characters. Next slide, please. Uh, the characters in place are often categorized, categorized into major and minor characters, depending on their importance to the plot. Major characters uh, usually have a plot to say and appear frequently during the play, uh, while uh, minor characters have a smaller role or just appear briefly. Uh, however, occasionally, non-existent characters can play a role on occasions, but this is a unique situation. Then we have characters' complexity. Major characters are often, but not always, multidimensional and dynamic, whereas small, uh, smaller characters are often monodimensional and static. Multidimensional characters have a variety of personality qualities, making them um, fairly complicated. They also tend to develop during the course of the story, though this is not always the case. Monolingual uh, characters, on the other hand, can frequently be summed up in a single phrase or statement implying that they have few personalities, uh, personality qualities and are essentially types. Uh, Monodimensional characters are frequently stagnant in the sense that they do not develop or alter during the play. Next slide, please. Characters and gender convention. Since genders uh, uh, generally follow particular norms, even when it comes to the dramatist personnel or theatrical uh, personnel, 
the quality of characters can sometimes be influenced by the subgenres to which a play belongs. And then the contrast and correspondence. Contrast in play can often be classified by way of contrast and correspondence. Individual attributes are brought into sharper perspective and specific qualities are highlighted in, rela in relation to the larger plot by presenting similar characters in such a, con a contrastive manner. Next slide, please. Now we have character constellation. Character constellation presents a range of da data-driven that is statistical model to study depictions of characters in terms of sympathies and antipathies among characters. Usually, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I mean, usually one can make the distinction between heroes and their enemies or protagonists and antagonists, and one can find characters who collaborate and support one another. The next is character configuration. Character configuration denotes the sequential presentation of different characters uh, together on stage. Configuration does change uh, whenever characters exceed exist or enter the stage. Next slide, please. And the last discussion is about the technical of co uh, characterization. Characters uh, in drama can be applied by using various techniques of characterization, but uh, mainly there are two ways of technique uh, that use in, a, uh, in determining a character, which are explicit and implicit. That's all about my explanation. The next explanation will be continued by Liana. Time is short. Okay, well, thanks for the time that you're given to me. I would like to explain about types of utterance in drama. Utterance means the talk or the language used either in real life or drama. Dramatic talk has the pragmatic function and also poetic or rhetorical function. The first one is pragmatic function. The function is to show purpose, for example, to persuade, to influence, and then to, in, to convey information that can be found in real life conversation. And then poetic function. The function is to show the artistic element of talking. It is used language in ways to which differ from standard usage to draw an attention to its artistic nature. Next slide, please. Let's move, we move on to the monologue, dialogue, and also soliloquy. Monologue is the talk was done by only one person. Dialogue, the talk needs to be done by two or more people. And then soliloquy, the talk is done by only one person. However, he is truly alone because this talk is personal, which means he is speaking to himself. Next is asides. Another special form of speech in drama is so-called aside. Aside from any other types of utterance, aside is the only talk that combines monologue and soliloquy but he speaks towards the audience while the other there are done sites are used to such an extent here that they make the entire plot with the character secrets and hidden to almost vertical the assets in this excerpt are spoken both to other character next slide please Next, we talk about turn allocation, stichomitia, and repartee. Turn allocation. This is this describes how many how many lines for each character. The chance to speak through the entire play, and then stichomitia. This type of turn allocation is special because each character turns are one line and another. This is usually used in commentating or disagreement. And then the last one is repartee. This is the mark used in dialogue that one person shows an intention in his lines and the other response to cover that intention and is stronger. The distribution of amount of turn speaker are allocated and placed in an important resource to investigate it in drama. Next slide, please. The significance of wordplay in drama. 
the play with language entertains spectators and at the same time attracts and sustains their attention. Word play is used for entertaining, attracting, and holding the attention of the audience. A special type of word play is so called pun. Pun is a word are used similarly to each other, like homonies, where words are used which are the same or at least similar in sound and spelling, but different in meaning. Another concept to be mentioned in the context of play with language is wit. Wit is the lines which show humor and intellect. The idea of wit, which combines humor and intellect, plays a significant role in the so-called comedy of manners. Wit is expressed in brief verbal expression, which is which are intentionally con contrived to create a comic surprise. Next slide, please. Let's we move on to the types of stage. Drama, just like the other genre, has undergone significant change in this historical development. This is partly attributable to the fact that stage types have also changed and have thus required different forms of acting. Let us have a look at the various stage forms throughout the history based on Twitter in 1997. The first type is Greek classicism. Plays in ancient Greece were staged in amphitheater, which were marked by a round stage about three quarters surrounded by the audience. Greek classicism could hold great masses of people up to 25,000. The chorus was a vital part of ancient drama. The stage scenery was natural and was accompanied by the real landscape surrounding the amphitheater. Next type is the Middle Ages. Medieval plays of pri were primarily performed during religious festivals. They were <coughs> staged on wagons which stopped somewhere in the marketplace and were surrounded by the audience. The close vicinity between actors and audience must account for a way of acting which combines serious conditions of the topic. In question with stand-up comedy and funny all about these things, depending on the testy of the audience. Next step is restoration period. The theater of the 17th and 18th century was considerably small, smaller than the Elizabeth Theater, and performance took place in closed room uh, with artificial lighting. In contrast to modern theater, where the audience is in the dark, the audience in the restoration period was seated in a fully illuminated room. Next up is Rena Renaissance England. The Elizabeth stage was typically found in public theater. However, the Elizabeth Theater was still on open air theater as the lack of artificial lighting made daylight necessary for performance. The Elizabeth Theater could hold up to 2,000 people, and the audience was rather heterogeneous, consisting of people from different social backgrounds. And then the last type of the stage is modern times. The stage of the 19th and 20th century is called Proscenium stage or picture frame stage uh, because it is shaped in such a way that the audience watch the play as it would regard a picture. The ram clearly spirits actor and the audience, and the curtain underlines this division. Since the audience is thus uh, not disturbed from watching the play and can fully concentrate um, on the action on stage, it becomes easier to create an illusion of real life in place. Furthermore, the scenery is now often elaborate and as true to life as possible. I think that's all for me. The next presentation will be continued by my friend. The end, time is yours. Well, thank you for the time given to me. Now I'm Dian Anga, going to continue the presentation by explaining the last uh, our materials, namely dramatic subgenres. Based on Aristotle's poetic, there are two genres of drama. 
The first one is comedy. It is more focused at entertaining and making the audience laugh, and its main special feature is a happy ending. The types of the comedy is the first one is romantic comedy. The second one is satiric comedy, comedy of manner, farce, comedy of humor, melodrama, high comedy, and the last one is low comedy. The second type of uh, dramatic subgenre is tragedy. It shows a sad story and contains a serious action and conflict. Then, the story usually ends in disaster, such as a character with a bad luck like death. The type of tragedy, such as Seneca tragedy, revenge tragedy, domestic or bourgeois tragedy, and the last one is tragedy comedy. Move on to the next slide. Well, let's talk in detail about uh, the types of comedy first. The first type is romantic comedy. Usually, it tells the struggle of a couple's love story who wants to be together. There are also elements of dream or magic added here. The example of romantic comedy is A Midsummer Night's Dream or As You Like It by Shakespeare. The second type is satiric comedy. It contains critical purpose such as criticizes philosophical ideas or social norms deviations. The example of this type is Paul Phone and The Alchemists by Ben Johnson. Well, uh, the third one is comedy of manner. Visually, it looks like a satirical, and generally the plot revolves about romance with witch language and cynicism. One of the authors is William Wizardley. The next type is farce. It presents a show that makes the audience explode with laughter and exaggerated character traits are the main characteristics of this type. The example is Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. Next slide, please. Well, this is the, con uh, the continuation of the comedy type. Fifth is comedy of humors. Comedy humor is a genre that focuses on a character on various characters that displays two or more traits or called humor, which influence their personality, desires, and behavior. According to Ben Johnson, character traits are determined by four aspects of humor, namely body fluids, sanguine, plum, apathy, yellow bile, irritable, and the last one, black bile, it is melancholy which can cause personality distortion. The example of this type is Everyman by Ben Johnson. Then we have melodrama here. It is a mix of romantic plot with music and giving emotional stress to the audience, but the story has a happy ending. We also have high comedy, it is relating to intelligency or comedy ideas that have a serious purpose such as criticism. 
And the last one is low comedy. It's more emphasis on elements of humor, slapstick, and jokes. Let's we move to the next slide. The next genre is tragedy. And let's talk about its type in further. The first one is Seneca tragedy. It is rooted in ancient Roman tales where the tragedy is writ, not staged. The characteristic or the story is divided into five segments, complex plot and high dialogue style. The example of this type is Charles and Cressida by Dryden. The second one is Revenge Tragedy or Tragedy of Blood. It is a drama with the theme of revenge and the fatal consequences of revenge. Made in the form of poetry, the main character are high social people and they teach violent lessons to the audience. The third one is domestic or bourgeois tragedy. The characteristic of this type is that the main character is middle class with conflict and common character. In addition, the team is suffering with the aim of affecting empathy, picky, and fear in the audience. Take George Lillo's The History of George Barnwell for the example of this type. And the last one is Tragedy Comedy. It is a combination of tragedy and comedy genres, in which there is a composite of flawed elements characters, and moral messages from both genres. Specifically, a serious conflict that usually ends in disaster suddenly becomes a happy ending. And the example of this type is The Changeling by Thomas Middleton. That's all from my material. I will give the time back to the moderator, Sri. Thank you. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for the amazing explanation. Lastly, uh, before we close this presentation, let us conclude what we have presented. So for this subject or this topic, it can be concluded that drama is not only a performance that can be enjoyed visually, but there's also a text play which is a story in written form which underlines the establishment of drama performances. Inf information that implicit in drama can be obtained from, from the character's dialogue aside from the narrator. Moreover, there are unified structures and elements constructing a drama such as plot and space. Furthermore, there is time related to the, to the duration and the frequency of the same scene is shown. Characters are also another important super supporting element. Characters that appear often called major but some are rare rarely called minor. These characters in tagging the, the story absolutely through utterances that can be called monologue, dialogue, or soliloquy. Lastly, genre has an important influence in what drama will be presented, such as comedy or tragedy genre. All of these elements in perfecting a performance are equipped with five key sto story stages namely introduction, complicating action, climax, falling action, and catas catastrophe. Keep in mind that drama does not exist as it is now, which is rooted in the development of the times succeeding the social influences. Therefore, each stage has its own uniqueness and characteristics. All right, that's all the material that Group 4 uh, can present today. I hope uh, what we present today is useful for everyone. And thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.